In this video, we are going to cover the last functional group in chapter 14, which is amides. Amides are molecules similarly to esters. Um, they are synthesized from carboxylic acids. That's why we consider them derivatives of carboxylic acids. Now, the difference between a carboxylic acid and an amide is that instead of having the hydroxyl group, an amide is going to be bonding the C double bond O to a nitrogen, and that nitrogen can have two hydrogens or it can have even a nitrogen with an alkyl group. The first thing that we're going to do is the naming of amides, okay? In both common and IUPAC names, amides are named by dropping the oic acid or ic acid for the common name, but we don't deal with the common name of carboxylic acids. And then you're going to add the suffix amide. Another way that you can do it is writing the alkane name, erasing the E, and putting amide. And then if there are alkyl groups that are attached to the nitrogen, understand that they're going to have the prefix and, and they're going to be followed by the alkyl name. We are going to be practicing this naming with the first two molecules on the worksheet. So, as you can see here, in the first one, if we number the carbons, Okay, we're going to have one, two, three, four carbon atoms in our longest carbon chain. So that means that if we write the alkane name, butane, we can erase the E and write the word amide. This amide is not substituted at the nitrogen. So, we are just going to write the substituents that are present in the molecule, which are a methyl group on 2 and a methyl group on 3, and the full name of the first compound is going to be 2,3-dimethylbutanamide. Now, in the next molecule, as you can see, this time we do have a substituent on the nitrogen. When that happens, understand that we're going to put the letter N, the name of the substituent. In this case, it's going to be a methyl group. Now, one of the things is that in this amide, we see that we have a C double bond O bonded to a benzene ring. This whole group has a specific name. It is called a benzamid. And it's specifically like that because we have a carbon holding a double bond oxygen bonded to nitrogen as our signature of the amide. As I just mentioned a few uh, moments, when it comes to the preparation of amides, understand that we're going to be using a carboxylic acid and a type of amine. It could be ammonia, it could be a primary, it could be a secondary amine, and we're going to heat them. Tertiary amines will not react with carboxylic acids to make amines. So, in essence, what's going to be happening overall in the reaction is that if I highlight the atoms, the OH in the carboxylic acid will combine with one of the hydrogens in the ammonia or the amine, and those 
atoms are going to make water. Then you will be linking the rest of the amine or the ammonia molecule to the C double bond O, and that's what results in the formation of the amide. As you can see, in the top example, we have a reaction with a carboxylic acid and ammonia. In the bottom example, we're going to have a, a molecule in which we have a carboxylic acid reacting with a primary amine. Now let's do these examples from the worksheet. So again, when it comes to the reactions, you know that this is uh, what is called an amidation reaction. And an amidation reaction is the formation of an amide. Because we have a carboxylic acid and an amine. In this case, we have a primary amine. Remember, what is going to happen is that in this case, if I just take away the hydrogens and I do them in expanded form, I draw them out, remember that during an amidation reaction, what is going to happen is that one of the hydrogens in the amine will combine with the hydroxyl of the carboxylic acid and those two are going to be making water. Then I'm going to redraw my molecule, okay? So here I have one, two, three, four carbon atoms. I have the double bond to oxygen, I have a methyl group on carbon two, and then I'm going to link that to the nitrogen atom and the substituent that is attached to it. So we're gonna have nitrogen bonded to its hydrogen bonded to an isopropyl group. So if we look at the next reaction, we have benzoic acid reacting with aniline and the product of that reaction will be the following molecule. Amides also undergo the process of hydrolysis. And when it comes to hydrolysis of amides, similar to what we saw on esters, they can occur under acidic conditions and they can occur under basic conditions. When we have the acid hydrolysis of an amide, understand that we're going to be producing a carboxylic acid and an ammonium salt. And the difference is that when we're doing base hydrolysis of base hydrolysis of an amide, we're going to be producing a carboxylate salt and amine. I will not be asking you in the exam a predictive products for hydrolysis of amides, but I want you to understand the concepts of what are the functional groups that are produced if an amide is hydrolyzed on basic conditions or under acidic conditions.